See it live on... Hold on. Just have to reconnect to the internet. I do see it live on Periscope, so I'm assuming that we are live also on DLive and other platforms too. Of course, YouTube, uh, Facebook, I presume, right? Wouldn't we be live on possibly even Twitch by now? Press 1 if you see me. I have to... I don't know. The, uh, seems like the... I use both the Wi-Fi and the Ethernet, or Ethernet? How do you pronounce this stuff? Um, I like Ethernet, but the Black Bill says Ethernet, which it makes sense to call it Ethernet, but it's like so sketchy of a connection. What a mess. I don't know if it's my fault or my adapter's fault or what, but it is Tuesday, November 3rd, 2020, election day, and by the way, I am wearing my Get a Job t-shirt, Alpha 2020, shout out to Get a Job. I think it's teespring.com slash stores slash get a job, all one word, I believe. And we have the uh, MAGA hats over here in the, uh, in the peanut gallery. <laughs> That's racist. It's racist. Did you know that the peanut gallery is racist? It's also racist to call a spade a spade. Thank you guys for the ones. Thank you. Appreciate it. It is 9.02 a.m. U.S. Pacific Standard Time. Not daylight, but standard. We are back. And it feels so good to um, guys that need their sleep. <laughs> Appreciate you joining. I'm going to be touching on, you know, the election coming up. Tr some changes that Trump is rumored to be wanting to make. I prefer to talk about stuff that has happened rather than speculation, but I'll touch on it. And Kyle Rittenhouse, a political prisoner. Did you know that he hadn't even been, he'd been in, pri in jail two months for no doing nothing wrong? Ridiculous. And they're holding him on bail for $2 million. He just was extradited, I guess, to uh, Wisconsin. His lawyers were fighting against that because it's a lynch mob over there. Kenosha, Wisconsin rioted over a seemingly justified shooting of a black man. Yes, it was in the back, but he had a knife. He had a knife, and he was resisting arrest, and a taser didn't work, but they rioted, and Kyle tried to calm the situation. They attacked him. He um, shot them in self-defense, quite obviously, but the conservatives are the only sane people in this country, and the liberals hate Decent men. Decent young men like Kyle Rittenhouse. And uh, go ahead and ban Pop Biggs. You can go ahead and ban him. <laughs> Over there. Or whatever his name is, I don't know. Oh, uh, here, let me just go ahead and ban him. Hide user. Oh, thank you, Matt, living the dream. Right on, man. He already addressed it, dude. Go check, I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday's show of last week on the Jesse Lee Peterson show. Don't be lazy and trifling. And, uh, what, is it defamatory? Yeah, it's defamatory. I will be getting to your calls, to You know, ACB, Ale Alexandria, <laughs> Cortez. Never mind, I don't want to. <laughs> but I, I mean uh, President Trump's pick for the Supreme Court. Letting us down. Such a disappointment. But to be expected, I think. Kissing up to DeRay, all these people. Thank God for the one true justice, Clarence Thomas. A crazy terror attack in uh, Vienna, Austria, which is used to be 70, almost 75% um, Catholic. And that's declined by like probably more than 10%. And used to be in the, 1981 when I was born, Austria used to be 1% Muslim. And now it's, well, 2016, it was nearly 8% Muslim. And who knows, it's probably higher than that still. And they're getting bold. The evil is getting bold, rearing its ugly head. And that's what it does when they get to be, to have numbers, because that's what they have faith in. They don't have faith in God, so they have faith in numbers. Don't, let's not get sucked into that. Um, 
I do have some clips that I meant to get to yesterday. I said that I would get to them yesterday, but I didn't. And so I have some fun stuff to show you. President Trump from 1980. Hopefully I don't get flagged. We'll see. Um, but I think I'll play it anyways because it's so nice. And a little bit of showing how it's done dealing with being recorded whether or not you want to be recorded, right? Because in public, they can record you. You don't have to give permission. It's crazy. This poor Paul Ng guy. I have a little bit more information on him and other stuff. And your calls, 888-775-3773. AOC is based, says Lucky Strike 34. <laughs> Anyways, let's get on with the show. One, two, three, four. Oh. So, by the way, have you been hearing about these caravans, these MAGA caravans or MAGA convoys? Isn't that awesome? Well, kind of. Are they all decent people? I don't know. Statistically speaking, most people are not that decent. And I've heard, didn't we hear in church, did you guys hear that guy talking about the road rage incident in church with Jesse Lee Peterson on the other day? Where somebody tried to run him off the road and a couple of family members? Was it, were those MAGA people who tried to, alleged MAGA people who tried to run him off? Yeah, so not everybody with the MAGA hat, it may be a, it may be somebody pretended to be MAGA. Or it may be just somebody... Who's angry? Because there are angry people on our side, too. Right? Who uh, misjudge. So who knows what the real truth is? Well, there was this controversy. Let me get right into this one. There was this controversy. I have this clip called 13. Clip 13. Trump truck versus Biden, uh, I don't know, bus car thing. <laughs> You guys heard about, this past Friday, this Biden-Harris campaign bus was driving on the freeway in Texas. And these trucks flying MAGA flags and Trump flags and thin blue line flags, big old pickup trucks. You know how the pickup trucks nowadays are huge? Well, they kind of surrounded this bus. They flanked the bus, and they got in front and behind, and it just kind of, you see the Biden bus, but you also see all these flags, and what do those flags say? Oh, those flags say Trump. (laughs) And so that's kind of cool. It's kind of um, drowning out or competing with the disgusting Biden message, because Biden is really, truly disgusting. You know, he pushes the fake racism thing, attacks the Second Amendment, and pretends he's a man of the people. Pretends that he's like a working man's man. What a phony. Complete phony. And there are a lot of phonies amongst working men. Some of them are phony and some of them are genuine. And some of them are suckers and some of them can see through the, the, the bogus speech. <laughs> the BS, bogus speech. Well, the FBI said that they are aware of this incident where they drove, according to the Daily Mail, which is a sleazy far-left foreign outlet, doesn't have any business even mentioning America stuff. Although sometimes they put out information that's, that's interesting that other media outlets don't uh, report. But generally, they're pretty far-left and sleazy. Just disgusting. Perverted everything. Daily Mail. You know, by the way, uh, who's that guy? Pierce Morgan. He's like, he writes articles for Daily Mail now. Because CNN fired him. (laughs) He was, I guess, bad for ratings or something like that. Or he was bringing in too many people who are on the right. Like, 
Gun Owners of America guy and Alex Jones and Jesse Lee Peterson onto his shows to debate with them fail in debates against the right because they are right. And so Pierce Morgan is like a, I don't know if he's an editor in chief or just writes his little pieces in Daily Mail. But they said, oh, these cars were driving perilously close. And The Hill, the far left outlet, The Hill. I call him far left. Sometimes they have one guy who's decent, Jonathan. I'm blanking on his name. But this one, there's one guy, I think his first name is Jonathan or something like that. A reporter who's pretty decent. Investigative journalist, I think. And he's reported on some stuff that he's become kind of unpopular amongst his colleagues in The Hill. Because he's an accurate reporter, meaning he's conservative. (laughs) Or not even maybe conservative, I don't know. But he's been telling a little bit of the truth that has been hidden. And uh, people hide the truth and denial, deceit, delusion, as the great journalist Colin Flaherty says about, well, he talks about black crime, black mob violence and black on white crime. But... Jonathan, man, what's his name? Solomon. John Solomon. It's not even Jonathan. It's John Solomon, I think. It may be J-O-N, but John Solomon is a decent journalist from The Hill, but the rest of them are sleaze. The Hill. I interviewed one guy who hosts a show on The Hill for um, The Hake Report. Sagar and Jetty. Nice guy, but... Yeah, he's a nice guy. He's suppo- he wrote a book along with that Crystal Ball lady, former MSNBC woman. She hosted a debate with um, Jesse Lee Peterson versus the ACLU and this illegal alien, former illegal alien woman and all kinds of sleazy people. Some guy from the Atlantic at Politicon, Crystal Ball, liberal woman, Bernie supporter, disgusting. But they re- wrote about the new right or something like that. But this Sagar and Jetty guy, he didn't even want to associate with Representative Steve King. And that got, that took our little interview like way off track because, or not off track, but it caught my interest because he he admitted that DC is in a bubble, political correctness, and yet he's believing in this phony political correctness thing, accusing Steve King Representative Steve King, Congressman. Google a picture of Congressman Steve King. Like, he seems like a decent man. Or half decent, anyway. From uh, Iowa. I like to talk about him because he got railroaded. What's up, Jay? Yes, four more years. I say 12 more years. (laughs) He got railroaded by the Rhino Republicans. Disgusting enemies of the people, right? And Sagar and Jetty of the Hill. He hosted... He co-hosts a show with this crystal ball woman on the Hill. And he said, oh, I wouldn't associate with him because he, he mentioned racialized language about cockroaches. Well, some people act like cockroaches. What's the big deal? But no, there's this cowardice and fear, fake fear over racism. Over racism for vic- victim slash perpetrator groups such as blacks and Hispanics and maybe some Muslims too. What a shame. You have the picture of King, Steve King. Just a, and because he's white, he was called a white nationalist. And he said, you know, he was misquoted by the New York slimes. Enemies of the people. Look at this man. And he was stripped of his committee assignments by the rhinos. Talk about a self-inflicted wound. This man should have, they should put him at the forefront. They put AOC at the forefront of the Democrats. They don't try to hide her. And all the sleazy people. So, cowardice on the part of Republicans. But the Hill said, oh, these these cars, these Trump trucks harassed a bus. How do you harass a bus? It's ridiculous. Did they prevent the bus from exiting? I haven't heard any allegation of that. They... Claim that they ran the bus out of town. That's fine. Did they actually intimidate the bus? No. 
I don't think so. I haven't really actually heard anything to that effect. But there was this little run-in where this this car and this truck, well, this was not even a car. Show the picture of this vehicle, this white vehicle, liberal vehicle, meaning driven by a liberal, who I think that this vehicle was at fault. The driver of this vehicle was at fault. This was the vehicle of a supposed Biden staffer, right? I think, according to what's been reported. And you can see, if you're watching the video, you can see in this photograph, all kinds of mud on the side of it, by the way. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But it's a white, like, SUV-looking little uh, car thing, right? And not that little. And you see little r- circular scrapes or scuffs, like from a truck tire, along the side of it. And I'm going to show you video of what happened, but it's kind of weird because it... Because the woman who's recording the cell phone video of this footage of this incident on a Texas freeway surrounding the Biden, right behind the Biden bus, kind of doesn't show what is completely what instigated this, who instigated. You do see this car and a Trump truck. Competing for a lane basically like bumping against each other and the truck pushes this vehicle back into the left lane watch this Oh, what the heck happened? It's all scrunched up. Can you fix the aspect ratio? Oh, I'll watch. We'll fix it the next time I'm about to run out of gas, which I'm sure some of you would love (laughs) Look at this. Look at that. (gasps) <gasps> yeah. Oh my god. Stay in your lane. Literally. Can you fix the aspect ratio? That's supposed to be full width. I don't know what happened. Let me know. Um, but I'll show it again, um, whether the aspect ratio gets fixed or not. But you'll see that the white liberal car, the liberal white car, is... Pushing into the lane. It looks like it's trying to run the truck out of its lane. In the footage, the car goes into the truck's lane. And it's, we call it a car, but it's, you know, it's an SUV. Like a mid-size SUV or something like that. So it's not like a little sedan thing trying to go up against a truck. You know, it's a full-blown SUV type thing. Here is the, uh, yeah, yeah, I I did make it kind of split screen. Here it is. Here it is again, guys. Check it out. Kind of hard. You see the truck in the back, and you see the other car kind of. They're they're kind of riding both lanes. I'm about to run out of gas, which I'm sure some of you would love. (laughs) Boom! Look at that! Yeah, get in your lane. (gasps) Pick a lane, liberal. Oh my god! Nice. And that's all he did. He didn't try to continue, he just asserted his lane. (laughs) It's pretty bold. I don't know if the tr- if the MAGA guy did anything wrong. It appears to me that the Biden guy, Biden supporter, Biden staffer, was trying to pull shenanigans. Was trying to be like, let me in. Trying to get in. I think the, tr- the uh, Trump vehicle was riding kind of close behind the Biden tr- bus. That way a car couldn't get in between it. And the Biden and the uh, Trump. You know, does that make sense? So that you kind of tailgate a little bit, meaning right up real close against it, so that another car can't get in between. That's fine. You have the right to do that. It's not advisable. They say, oh, stay six car lengths. So, you know, one car length per 10 miles per hour that you're going, right? But in practice, people don't do that. And especially with when you're trying to make a, when you're trying to do something, (laughs) you have the right to do it. It's your own risk, right? You versus bus, who's going to win? Come on. So that wasn't even really perilously close. A bus can't stop faster than a truck, I don't think. So, seems like uh, the other car was at fault, but the liberal media was pretending, and the liberals on Twitter were pretending, oh, 
this Trump truck was trying to commit attempted murder or assault or crazy stuff like that. Ridiculous. So I just had to show that footage. I meant to show it yesterday because I reported it on it. I reported on it on Hake News, I think at the end of hour two yesterday. So, there you have it. MAGA country in Texas. And I heard that they canceled three events <laughs> in Texas. I told you guys all about that. And Trump trains and MAGA drags, snarling traffic, raising tensions in multiple states. You know, we've been hearing for years and seeing Black Lives Matter walking onto the freeway, freeways and roadways, which is illegal, blocking traffic, harassing vehicles, breaking car windows, setting cars on fire, tearing apart the cities, breaking into um, suburban homes, or breaking the windows anyways, and harassing public officials at their homes, being evil, being a lynch mob. Thank God for rule of law. But we are rapidly losing rule of law and the justice system. Look at Kyle Rittenhouse. It's crazy. Kyle Rittenhouse in jail for making an act in self-defense. Crazy. Uh, Jesse Lee Peterson hosting the show. Thank you. Appreciate that. Evgeny Crosby 2020 says, where are the Biden supporters, Hake? I don't know. I don't know. Many people, if any people, are who support Biden, or are excited about him, or even, honestly, Kamala Harris. Dark Side of the Bear, what? Host in the Hague Report on DLive, thank you. Turtle No Neck with the Diamond. Your intro, sh- your intro song is a schmood. S-C-H-M-O-O-D. Anybody translate? <laughs> what is, I, in fact, I hate to even repeat that word. I don't even know what it means. But thank you, guys. I'm going to get to your calls, but quickly. Ah, do I want to play this? Now, maybe I should play this a little bit later. I do have this, a couple of clips. Maybe I'll get to a call or two, but I have a couple of clips of Donald Trump, went before he was president, when he was 34 years old, and boy, he looks young in the, these clips. It's from an interview with Rona Barrett, R-O-N-A-B-A-R-R-E-T-T, from the YouTube channel Reeling in the Years Archives. It's a four-minute interview. I mean, four-minute excerpt of an interview that actually never aired. She was talking to this guy about being million, about millionaires, right? TV special on millionaires. But they touched on politics, interestingly. They had a... F- f- it was 40 min- 47 minutes of film footage and this part never aired, but they released it back in 2017, just before he was inaugurated. Just, you know, for historical interest. And it is somewhat interesting. Talks about being respected again, and we need a strong leader who, with perhaps somewhat unpopular but right views, and need a group of people to choose a, the right strong candidate And that's basically what he did with running for office and holding all these MAGA rallies. Those people, or we the people, chose a uh, decent man, half decent anyway, man to run for office. Very rare. Ridiculously rare. And I also want to show the footage of Paul Ng. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right. Paul Ying versus that Andre Abrams guy one more time. And then play Tucker Carlson (laughs) from, I think it was a 2013 little off-the-cuff interview with Joey Boots of Howard Stern infamy. He died now, but this Joey Boots guy. Anyway, let me first get to George in Greece. He wants to comment on the 2020 election and also abortion. Did you know? That Joe Biden is so-called Catholic, and he supports abortion. And so does, by the way, Kamala Harris. It's disgusting. So here is George from Greece. What's up, George? Hello, man. Hey. What's up? How are you? I'm fine. How are you? 
I'm great, man. Right on. What time is it in Greece right now? What time? Yeah. Now it's uh, around 8 o'clock in the afternoon, in night. 8 o'clock in the evening. Wow. That's cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> man, I want to talk about, like, I want to ask you about something about abortion. Okay. Like, I, I was I was arguing with my father last last week. He agrees with me that abortion, when, like, when someone doesn't want his baby, he's, he should not abort it because right. that's murder, that's a crime, that's a sin. Yeah. He's saying to me that, I'm saying to him that the only, uh, the only time that we must, that we should uh, allow abortion is when the mother is in danger, something like that. Uh-huh. If the mother might die, might die, then we must have an abortion. Okay, I give you the right to do that. Because you kill a life to save another. Right. In that, uh, in that mind. But he's telling me that we should also allow abortion uh, into, like, if the baby has problems, like he cannot walk, he will be for all the whole of his life in the bed. He will have, like, problems with his life. He, he couldn't walk, he couldn't speak, something like that. Yeah. He's, disabilities, he, I don't know how it's in English. Right. No, you, you said it right. Disabilities or whatever. Deformities. Okay, okay. Yeah. And he's saying to me that we should allow abortions then because his, this uh, child's future would be a torment. No. And he's saying, yeah. and he's saying that uh, the mothers and the father should have the, the call on that. And I, I'm not sure about what, what to support on that, and I want your opinion. I say your father's wrong on that. That's playing God. Because who's yes, to say exactly. that the... That's, that's who, what I said to you. Yeah, who's to say that the doctor's right about the deformity, right? Sometimes they say, yeah. oh, the, the baby's going to have problems, and then it doesn't. And then on top of that, yeah. they, um, those children who have those issues... And the parents who raise those children, they're happy that that baby is alive. They're happy that their child is living, or the or the yes. adult even to the to the throughout yes, the yes. life. They're happy that this person is alive. I know, I know. Yeah. But he's he's basically saying to me that his life, because science has progress, and we we like uh, we we know if a baby will have. Disabilities, we we not surely know, but probably we know. Yeah. And so he's telling that both the mother and the father and the children will have like a, a life of torment because the baby we don't know how much it would live, and goes on and goes on with many problems and something like that. And he's saying that the father and the mother has. To, to like, to take, to they should be allowed to take that call. No, but I'm not. I'm not agreeing with that because yeah, God is the one that can take life. Right. Not us. Yeah, exactly. It's like if somebody were to get in a car accident and be paralyzed, do they have the right to commit suicide, or do yeah, the exactly. do the people who have to take care of this young man or young woman? Who gets paralyzed exactly. in a car accident have the right to kill this person because it's too much trouble? Torment, exactly. torment is spiritual. It's not from the physical stuff. Yeah, it's very yeah. challenging. I know a lot of people who have um, like heavily autistic children, and yes. a lot of them are very. A lot of the family members are very bitter about that. And the reason I know they're bitter is because if you make a joke about like autism, sounds like artistic. And so, oh, I can draw. I guess I'm ar I guess I'm autistic. You make a joke like that. Sometimes these people, like the siblings of uh, real autistic people, will freak out on you and just have a yes, fit against you. And so I recognize that, yeah, it's a challenge. 
And if you're not if you're not spiritually strong enough to handle it, then of course it's going to be more of a problem. But it doesn't justify killing the child in the womb. Yes, you're not I God. I agree with you, and, that, yeah. and I believe that the only time that we should allow an abortion is when the mother is the mother's life is in danger. So we we're gonna kill a life to save another. Yeah, that's and the only. Maybe so, maybe so. And even then, in the olden days, sometimes mothers would die in childbirth. Not that I'm for know, that, not that I'm happy about that or exactly, but a lot of times, like, there are great men and women in history, especially men in history, that, you know, I can, I, I vaguely remember hearing, oh, such and such great man in history's mother died in childbirth, giving birth to yes. him. And what you would kill that great man of history for the sake of the mother who whose whole purpose in life is to have a baby she maybe she would want to sacrifice her life for the child, you know, so I, even then yes. it shouldn't always be but, the case I know I know uh, yeah. but in that time we should we should trust the the faith of the mother right, right. if she's if she's, she's a strong mother that puts her faith on God, trust God. She will do the childbirth, and if God wills it, she will survive or she will not. Yeah. But I think we should allow that, like, the mother, we should be trusting the faith of the mother, and we should be raising good children so that they would make the right choice. Yeah, I agree. You know, okay, uh, so tell your tell your father he's acting like a communist Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my, my father... My father, he's not like the situation here is here in Greece is that not all people, ninety percent of Greeks, are Christians. Yeah, but they are Christians like not by not so much by choice, but by tradition. Right. We still have because in my grandfather's age, like in the sixties, seventies, fifties, that time here in Greece. People not only learned from their parents the faith, but they experienced it also. They lived in the way of in the Christian life. They, they live the Christian life. They go to church, they pray, and do Christian stuff. And so they were experiencing their faith and didn't lose some things as they were growing up. Yeah. But... My the, my father's generation, like the eighties and the nineties, he's he just have it from tradition. Right. Like it's just what the morals that their parents uh, teach him. And so in some in some things he doesn't have a clear perspective. Right. Yeah. Okay, so what do you think about uh, the elections? I think Trump is going to win. I don't know yeah, for they, sure, but I think he will. You know, nobody is, nobody knows the future, right? Or some people might. Yeah, but. yeah. <laughs> know, yeah. For me, as a, as non American, this is the most serious election after your civil war. Yeah, interesting. That, you might be right. That's what that's what I think because this is America's last. Chance. Last chance. Yeah. Because the sin in America, the sin is tremendous. Yeah, it really you is. Know, we, we, the Orthodox Church calls America the new Babylon. <laughs> yeah. So, so much, so much sin is in America that it's like the new Babylon. Right. It's so accepted. This, it's evil. Yeah. And this is the the last chance of America to choose between God, between a society that has God on it, or a godless society. Yeah. The last chance. But the, the, hard, the hard fight for Trump is that in the last election, there was a woman, Hillary Clinton, and <laughs> I don't think that most uh, men like would vote for a woman like that, right? <laughs> even even if the other, if, even if they are leftists or Democrats or I don't know what, 
Yeah. But now that is Biden, a man, he might steal some some votes. We'll see. You know, we we'll all every, every day in the small choices that we make, we have to be faithful in those. Otherwise, we're not going to be strong enough to deal with whatever. And any election, know, the elections won't matter, you know, because you can't just know, yes. you can't just rest your morals on elections. Yeah, of course, yes. my father, my father has told me that we should never, never trust parties, parties like the right. Republican Party, the Democratic Party. Yeah, we must put our faith first in God and then and then in the people that we as human beings, believe that they are saying the good, the morally good thing. Only on people like President Trump. Do you think that President Trump fights for something good with your faith in him? And we'll see. Not on, not on parties, on organization or something like that. Right. We should trust, we should trust people. Yep. And, as as uh, they show themselves trustworthy. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. And whatever this election's outcome is, all you there in America, you need to put your faith in God. God always takes care of his people. Yeah. And to give you an example, my nation has gone a lot through our three and a half thousand years of history. <laughs> Greece, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And like 1,400 years ago, we were fighting a war against the Persians. I'm not talking about the ancient Greeks with Sparta and Athens and all that. I'm talking about the medieval Greeks. We called ourselves Romans back then, but you, you in the in the West might know us as Byzantine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And back in the it was in the 16 in the 600s. We were fighting the Persians, and because of a, of a civil war that we had, the Persians managed to gain ground and reach all the way to our capital, destroying everything in their path, even taking the true cross from Jerusalem. So, so there were the, uh, the Persian troops, like 100,000 Persian troops, outside of our capital, Constantinople, which is now in Turkey. Dang. And uh, and they were ready to take the city. And if the city was taken, the whole empire would, will, would crumble, would fall. The situation was so desperate because there was famine. The per- we were fighting the Persians for 30 years. And we were so desperate that the, the medieval Greeks, the Romans back, there, back then, printed into the coins, into their coins, may God help the Romans. Yeah. They were so desperate, so desperate. But in the last moment, God gave us a good emperor, a brave and just leader, and he defeated the Persians, pushed them all the way back to modern-day Iran. He restored the true cross. And what I'm trying to say is that even in the most difficult situation, if we trust Almighty God, we cannot be defeated. That's nice, we man. Cannot be, we, we cannot lose if we got if we have God on our on our side. And th- in America, like you, this is a very hard and very serious election. But God will not let His children perish. Nice, man. I appreciate yeah. that, George. Thank you, man. It's great to hear from God, you. Yeah, man. One last thing. Yeah. Like, right now, in this time and age, what, what, uh, like the priest in the church here in Greece and other Orthodox nations are, is saying that God is try is right now trying to see who is the right Christian, who is like. The true Christian, and not the fake one, who really puts his yeah. faith and trust God. It's being, and, it's becoming more yes, obvious. Yes, he's he's building his new ark. 
like Noah did back in the day. He's building his new ark. Interesting. And you better get into it because <laughs> there's going to be no outside. Interesting warning, man. I appreciate it, George. It's good to hear from Great you. Great to hear from you. Great to hear from you. Best wishes. Thank from you. 20, from 2020. All right. Thank you, George. Appreciate you, man. Take care. Bye-bye, man. All right. Very interesting. Epic call, says Canadian David. Ghost Murdoch wants to shoot himself in the face. What the heck? <laughs> no, I like that. And how far Greece has fallen, man. That's what happens. Rise and falls because people get spoiled and good times versus hard times. Anyway, let me get to Brandon in Oakland before I get on to um, some of these clips that I got to show you guys. Brandon in Oakland is excited for the men's forum coming up all the way down here in L.A. I think that's this Thursday, right? Th first Thursday of the month, 7 p.m. at Bond. Brandon in Oakland, right? Yeah. Brandon, how are you? All is well. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. It's good to hear from you. Uh, good to hear from you, man. It's been a minute. And, yeah. Uh, uh, you already said it. I'm just uh, I'm just really excited for the, the, the men's forum this week. I yeah. just wanted to, to uh, just kind of share it. I guess, I guess this is why I'm calling. I just want to... Uh, I've said it before, either on Jesse's show or your show, but anybody that uh, is a fan or just interested or anything, any anybody that follows you guys and watches you guys, it's like uh, it's like watching twenty hours in an hour. You know, it's it's <laughs> like it's you guys on steroids. You know, there's nothing like it. So I just would really recommend anybody that kind of thought about it a little bit, but maybe they're not close. They're not in the L.A. area. I'm from up north. I'm, I'm I'm driving uh, about six hours each way, so yep. it's 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 worth it for me. Twelve hours total, just to get that 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 one hour, or you know, a little bit over an hour, because we, we we hang out and talk a little bit usually afterwards. Yep. Um, and I just wanted to share that with the world, whoever's whoever's listening, and like I said, thinking about it, because it just hit me. It, it just hit me like you know all this election stuff and all this stuff. Like that stuff's cool, but I just realized like. I'm a day or two away from the men's forum, and that's my <laughs> big event right now. I, I really can't wait. So that's cool. I totally agree with you, man. It's important. We we you know even if we get, which we probably will, we get Trump back in office, and he really comes through for us in the second term, or the third and fourth too. Who knows? <laughs> we uh, can definitely, we definitely have to um, become men again in this country. Otherwise, we'll go the way of, of Greece or worse, you know? <laughs> I don't Period. think that he's, that George from Greece is wrong, that we're kind of like a Babylon, just very corrupt, and just accepting sin, even amongst the uh, people on the so-called right. So, yeah, I totally agree. It's a highlight of my month, every men's forum. It feels like it has been a while. Um, I don't know if we had one this past month. Was Jesse on a trip or something? Or... I don't know. Yeah, it feels like, oh yeah, he was down in Florida for that men's um, event down in Florida, which was cool, you know? Some of you guys from Florida and elsewhere flew into Florida, met Jesse over there, but yeah, we need a men's forum. I'm pumped about it. And it's usually 7 p.m. to 8.30, guys, and actually we tend to go over. Uh, sometimes 9, sometimes 9.30, sometimes like 9.45. But you can leave at 8.30. You don't have to stay. But And watch your backs, everybody. Uh, people are evil right now. Probably at a heightened level. People are on edge. Don't get into any uh, unnecessary road rage incidents or unnecessarily provoke people. Because people are evil right now. And they're just do commit violence on a... On a dime, if that's the right <laughs> phrase for it. But cool, man. I'm glad to hear that you're going to come down. It'll be good to see you again. It's been a while. Definitely. I can't wait, man. And I'll, I'll let you get to some other callers. And I'll just I'll see you in person, Hey, uh, if the Lord is willing and the creek don't rise. All right. Thank you, Brandon. Take care. All right. All right. All right. He's the guy who I say he sounds black, but he's white. Uh, on a whim. On a whim. Turn on a dime. <laughs> I don't know. 
No, he's not black. He's white. <laughs> but yeah, Oakland. But he's black, <laughs> says Andre. I mean, uh, Nick. Hang on, callers. I'm going to get right to you. Let me, before I play this, I don't want to play the, cl- the Trump clip right now. I'll play it maybe later, maybe at the beginning of the next hour, because I don't want to get it to get flagged or anything. I kind of doubt that it would be. But let me play this Paul Ng guy. Speaking of, like, stay smart in your behavior and confrontations with people. I have a mug shot of this Paul Ng. I call him Ng. I don't know if it's Ng. N-G is his last name. N as in Nancy. G as in uh, Grace. Nancy Grace. (laughs) Paul Ng, political prisoner. He did nothing wrong, but he was still arrested and mugshotted. Ridiculous. It was a valid and not entirely inappropriate conflict between two gentlemen, or three. They were both said things that were mildly inappropriate, but that's just man talk. Or beta man talk, if you like. And uh, only one of them got prosecuted and fired and smeared in the media. Andre Abram is the black dude, if you're looking at the video. He's the one showing himself in this cell phone camera footage. And this Paul Ng guy, I told you guys about it yesterday and played this clip. I'm going to play it one more time, just to refresh your memory. And um, I told you about it in Hake News last week after it kind of went viral. This is what he calls himself a very famous YouTuber. And they call this young man, oh, this... Getting a middle-aged man, a racist realtor, harasses a black man. It's not harassment. It was a conversation. Posted on this black dude's, young guy's, uh, Instagram. And it's ridiculous. The, he's, well, let me just play this clip for you. Here's the, here's the confrontation, uh, recorded for two minutes and a half, maybe. On this guy's Insta- posted to this guy's Instagram channel, the Black Dude's Instagram channel, Andre Abram. Watch this and listen. What's the issue? What's up? Why are you coming over here? I just want to see what you guys are taking pictures of. Why is it your business? Oh, you know what? This is my home. Okay, mine too. Why are you taking pictures Where of you me? Live? I live in Scottsdale. Why are you taking pictures of me? Michigan place? Yeah. Why are you taking pictures of me? Well, you know what? We've had problems here. I don't care. You don't know me. Why are you well, taking pictures I... of me? And I don't know you. Do you know a lot of white men are doing racist things in this world, sir? No. You don't know that? No. You're not aware I'm of that? I'm a racist. You are nice. racist. I'm a racist. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> okay. So, so what's, what's your issue? point? Why are you here? Because this is a no n- your zone. <laughs> not really. Oh, is it? Not really. <laughs> Tell me. There's not a not n- no n- your zone. I'm here. <laughs> And what I'm about to do, here. what I'm but about to do, I do, I stay here. What I'm about to do, yeah. me and my friend, we about to record our video. Okay. And you're not going to do a motherfucking thing about it. Y'all hear me? That's fine. Let no, me he's cussing. Do, what do you want to hear? No need for that. Thing. I don't want to hear you say nothing. Oh, I'll tell you what, though. You're just not going to do another motherfucking thing. So, what? as y'all see, you're can't keep the camera. Doesn't stop yeah. me from doing things. It doesn't mean <laughs> I'm about to record my video. Okay. And this bitch ass nigga not gonna do anything. Okay. Whoa. And let you try to touch me. Let you try to touch him. Oh, I wouldn't touch you. Let, let you, you already disrespecting <laughs> me. Can you step back a little bit? I feel, oh, I feel yeah, like you harm me. We are six feet. Yeah, no, no, no. I need you to step back. <laughs> so, don't okay. listen to what I'm saying. Okay. I'm gonna lay your bitch ass down. That's okay. Gotta... It's okay. Hey, hey. No need for lay threats. lay you down. I'm gonna lay you down. You are? Yeah. So, <laughs> just stay, just stay. Where you at? You ain't and man then, enough. It's okay. You don't got to think I'm man enough, my baby. Yeah, just keep it walking. <laughs> and it's going to be like that today, y'all. I hope y'all seen all of that. This is, I am a famous YouTuber. Um, This is actually his establishment. So anybody, y'all, y'all all it's know I just moved to Arizona. And this is his friend as well. So anybody that come to this establishment, y'all know what it is. Leaf blower. Y'all know exactly where his establishment is, and y'all know where he works. And it's okay. Hey, we we <laughs> got money, and we doing well. He mad. So, we're going to handle it like that. You saw he walked away. 
Because I got something for him and this man. But Kane, pick up your camera. We about to get this in. Whatever. Just an honest disagreement between two uh, men. Maybe a little bit of a misunderstanding. They both got a little heated. And uh, who cares? Complete non-issue, right? But no, this guy got arrested and charged with disorderly conduct. And mugshotted. Ridiculous. And then the, the business establishment that was falsely, uh, that the black guy falsely stated was his, his Paul Ings. It's not no. N-G-O is pronounced no, guys. Or somebody told me that. I know, I knew some Ings and I knew some no's. They're, they're not the same. Because <laughs> I grew up in uh, El Monte, Temple City area, and all kinds of Asians. But there is this stupid apology from Paul Ings, former employer or whatever. He was contracted with them. Russ, I don't know, Russ Lyon Sir on Twitter tweeted a message from our director of marketing, Nadine Angela Schiarini, I don't know, Schiarani, I don't know, ridiculous. And she posted this statement on Sunday, this was posted October 26th, last week sometime, right? I think that would have been Monday. On Sunday, we learned of an extremely hateful and racist video that was posted to social media showing one of our inactive independent contractors, Paul Ng, or Ng, demonstrating abhorrent, unacceptable behavior. Honestly, the black dude acted worse than the, than the Japanese guy, or whatever. No, that's not, Ng is not a Japanese name. I don't know what he is. Demonstrating abhorrent, um, unacceptable behavior. They were both acting a little... Edgy, right? Edgy. Heated. Talking like men who have a strong disagreement with each other. <laughs> who cares? Upon learning of this video, we took immediate action in severing his license, terminating his involvement with us effective immediately, kissing up, and condemning his c disgusting behavior. They're the ones who are disgusting, acting like this. Russ Lyon Sotheby's International Realty does not and will not tolerate racism or discrimination of any kind, except from blacks, because that's what this black dude did. Period. Never has, never will. Liars. We have notified, no, notified Arizona Department of Real Estate pertaining to severance, as well as Sotheby's International Realty, the Scottsdale Area Association Realtors, blah, 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 National Association of Realtors. In addition, we are notifying Air Do blah 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 Arizona Department of Real Estate Ing's behavior with the recommendation that his license be revoked. Why? For saying the N-word? Ridiculous. Though Ing had not sold a home with us in two years, commissions we find going back further than that will be donated to local charities. Please. That's just fake PR response, right? Cowards. They can't stand for what's right. And you know what? Um... According to, hold on, let me just read, the store, that store was not associated with Paul Ng, despite what Abram said, Andre Abram, the black dude, young man. He later clarified that point, I guess, on Instagram, but the damage is already done. We're collateral damage, said the store owner, explaining that the business received death threats and poor reviews since the video went viral. That's because it's a lynch mob. That's because the evil is attacking the people who are trying to keep their area safe, which is what Paul Ng, that's all Paul Ng was trying to do, or Ng. A post to River Trading Post's Instagram explains, That racist man has nothing to do with our business, and we fully condemn his actions. What actions? All he did was confront the guys. They were taking pictures. Cowards. This post goes on to explain that the business representatives will be meeting with Abram, the black dude, and fully support the victims of this verbal attack. It was a fair verbal fight. They both hurled uh, insults at each other, and in fact, the black dude went way over the top. Like typical blacks do, and you cut him some slack for that, you know, it's, ex it's to be expected. <laughs> they verbally attacked each other. Fair fight, no harm done, honestly. According to police records, Ng told officers he had been looking out for the safety of his family and neighborhood and was worried about rioting. 12 News reported. He said he keeps an eye on the neighborhood. Good for him. And the viral video was an unusual incident. Yep. 
According to the outlet, an officer asked Ng if he thought his comments were provoking and insulting, as if it's the officer's business. But, you know, he has the right to ask that, right? But it has nothing to do with law enforcement. We don't believe in hate speech. We're a free speech country. Ng told police he didn't intend to be inflammatory. The police report referenced in the 12 News story that also stated Ng told officers he used the language that he did, a no N-word zone, <laughs> because Abram inflamed him. He got all confrontation. Why are you taking pictures of me? It's a public place. I have the right to. And we've had problems here. And I don't know you. He said, you don't know me. Exactly. That's why he's concerned. He doesn't know you. And plus, you fit the description. <laughs> Or you fit the profile of the typical rioter. Sorry, but you do, Andre Abram. Even though you uh, didn't riot. Ng said that he thought Abram was insinuating that Scottsdale was populated with white racists. That's right. He said, do you know white people are committing a lot of racist things right now? In fact, it's the blacks who are doing that. It's not whites. It's the blacks. He also told 12 News off camera that he shouldn't have said what he did, according to the outlet. The outlet claims that Ng said, I shouldn't have said that. Did the black guy say he shouldn't have said, called the, the Asian dude an N-word? Or a B-word, A-word, N-word? <laughs> and cussing at him like crazy? No, blacks are fine with all that. They can act out affirmative action for the blacks. Ridiculous. So compare that, why are you taking pictures of me? I don't care. I don't care that there's been problems here. You don't know me. Compare that to how that's Andre Abram, also known as Lil AJ Dre, to the great, mature Tucker Carlson. How he reacted several years ago when I thought this was Baba Booey. Because I don't know. I've only listened once to uh, what's that guy? Uh, Howard Stern, and it wasn't on purpose. My friends were playing it in the car when I was in high school, so I don't know this Baba Booey stuff, <laughs> but I thought it was Baba Booey, but it's not Baba Booey. <laughs> and those of you who don't know anything about Howard Stern have no idea what I'm talking about, but probably I will, most of you know better than me what I'm talking about, because <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. But Joey Boots, this was the late Joey Boots. Baba Booey is still alive, actually. I had it wrong. Maybe somebody on Twitter said it was Baba Booey, but it wasn't. Photograph, somebody who's loosely associated with that degenerate Trump hater, coward, <laughs> Howard Stern, was out in New York photographing and video recording Tucker Carlson fly fishing. So here is a clip of Tucker responding to getting his picture taken and video recorded, and it's a two-minute clip or so. Less than three minutes, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure. And then I will get back to calls, guys, and I'll take a break and all that stuff. But just enjoy this clip, and uh, check it out. <laughs> Look at Tucker Carlson. How you doing? Great. I didn't know you could fish here. Huh? Pull the video camera. <laughs> I didn't know you could fish here. You can. You can? Yeah. What are you fishing for? Are you videotaping me? Yeah. Why? Because you're in public. I can. Well, I know you can. I, okay. I'm not challenging your right. I just okay. want to know why you I want. find it interesting that you're fishing in Central Park. Oh, yeah. It's absolutely allowed. Okay. It's allowed in three ponds. It's allowed in the pond. I've never seen anybody fish here before. I videotape that which I find interesting and unique about the city of New York. Well, it's a good thing. Yeah, you can. You can um, go right on the... The Central Park website, and I'll okay. tell you, you can fish in the mirror. Yeah, no, I'm not challenging the fact that you can. I'm just curious. I've never seen anybody fishing. It's not very good fishing, and there are too many people around. What kind of fish are there? Um, there are largemouth bass. In this thing here? Yep. And what do you use for bait? Uh, I'm a white fly fish, so I use flies. Do you catch the flies yourself? No, flies are, I'll show you. Oh, those are the things you make. Uh, you, exactly. Yeah, 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 okay, the string. <laughs> I'm stupid. I don't, I don't fly fish. I've been like deep, you know, sea water, you know, deep sea fishing on party boats and stuff. You're showing them the flies. Boats. Fly fishing. Friendly Tucker. Okay. 
Majesty, and you tie them. Yeah, yeah. And you tie your own flies? I do, yeah. You do? Where'd you grow up? Uh, I grew up in California. Yeah, you did a lot of fly fishing out there? Not really. No? But I learned in later life, and it's a great pleasure and a great sport. It's like relaxing, right? It's very. Uh, and, you know... You live in New York now? No. Well, I do live here part-time, actually. Okay. Um, I can tell by your manner that you're from New York. Get the hell out of here. Is it my <laughs> accent? It's everything about you, uh, I would say. <laughs> so when you videotape people, and I don't mind, right? but I bet you some people do. Yeah, they assault me sometimes. Is that true? Yeah. It makes for good video, though. What do you do with the video? I put it up on my channel. I have a lot of people that follow me. Do you really? Yeah. That's great. What about, kind of... I have about 15,000 <laughs> people that follow me. Really? Yeah. That's so neat. <laughs> Total gentleman. Imagine if Lil AJ Dre responded like that to Paul Ying. Oh, this is a no n-word zone? Rather, well, it would he probably wouldn't have never said this is a no n-word zone if he said, you know a lot of white people been doing racist things. <laughs> but imagine if he said, oh, you know white people been doing racist things if he's deluded enough to believe that, right? He's brainwashed. <laughs> yeah, and this Joey Boots guy, not exactly, doesn't come off as completely genuine. He OD'd, and I talk about it like it's kind of sad, and I don't know, but he OD'd on, what did he OD on? I think I have it. It came out uh, just in 20, 2016, OD'd at age 49. Accidental heroin overdose, allegedly, according to TMZ. Joey Boots. Sounds like a, he kind of sounds and looks to me a little bit like an Italian. Actor. Howard Stern character. Born in, what does that say, 67? The Bronx? I can tell by your manner you're from New York. Uh, just a little bit confrontational, disingenuous. What are you saying, Nick? <laughs> Was he in that movie? Uh, I didn't see that. I didn't see Beetlejuice. But, uh, yeah. Tucker Carlson, total gentleman, but definitely asks what he wants to know. And uh, not a pushover, but friendly. Not impolite, not necessarily overly friendly. That's how white men need to be. Right on, Tucker. Oh, no relation to the movie. <laughs> So that was several years ago, and it goes on. Like, you can watch it on Joey Boots' channel, even though Joey Boots is dead now. Isn't that nice? Recordings, huh? You can still hear Elvis, Tupac, even, even if, well, if you're a degenerate, right? Um, and so many other dead people. You can still, still hear them. That, I like that. That's kind of cool. Even though it's a little bit morbid. But, hey. Uh, I think that's deep how Tucker handled that. That's like a lesson. That's cool. Or am I shallow? <laughs> I think it's deep, though. That's cool. He maintained his campo composure. Found out what he wanted to know. Curious person. Isn't that cool? So, Lil AJ Dre, or whatever you call yourself. What is he, what's his name? Andre Abram? That's how you handle it. You know, I played for you his... Oh, I forgive him. His little statement that aired on, it was on TMZ, it might have been on other outlets, it's claiming that he forgives this Paul Ian guy, even though the Paul Ian guy did him no wrong. Ridiculous. The over, the phony overreaction to the N-word, calling him racist. Meanwhile, the blacks are running wild. It's such cowardice. And nobody cares. Ridiculous. Yeah, I have not seen Beetlejuice. I was sheltered and like I wasn't that interested in it at the time when I was a kid. <laughs> Are any of the Bone Thugs dead? I think I don't know. Anyway, uh, I oh man. Let me take a quick break. I'll be back in a couple of minutes here. ODB is dead, but that guy's from Wu Tang, right? He's not from. Yeah, I think that. Well, I don't know. I don't know my stuff. I don't even listen to Wu-Tang Clan. I get my black roots mixed 
Yeah, yeah, they're all the same. <laughs> and wasn't that guy white? ODB? No, never mind. No, he's black. Okay. <laughs> Neither of those groups have white people. Okay. All right, guys, I'll be right back. I do have uh, some more for you, some clips and calls. Hang on, Art and Mike, I will be getting to you guys. Mike has a very interesting uh, story to tell, I think, or a response to uh, George from Greece there. I'll be right back. I'll read your super chats. And I don't miss super chats. Somebody said, Kid Combo falsely accused me of, of not reading my super chats. I do read them. I once forgot, like yesterday I forgot, but I had to read them during the outro song. But anyway. I'll be right back. Hang tight for the rest of hour two. back guys appreciate you hanging on there sleepy dragon gave a diamond during George from Greece's call and said abortion is playing God and isn't that typical females always want to be God or equal with God and stuff like that isn't that what happened in the garden the snake the serpent said you if you eat from the tree of knowledge you'll be like God you'll be equal with God God doesn't want you to be equal <laughs> At least that's how I remember it. Equality. Penny Roo gave a diamond. Thank you. Appreciate the support. And Be Penny Roo also gifted a subscription to Brindle. Appreciate the support. Ladies and gentlemen, if LA is the city of sin, what is Jesse doing there? <laughs> Asks Martin P. No, you're confusing us with Las Vegas. That's the city of sin. I like to go to Vegas, but I like to keep on going and go to Willow Beach and hit up the, uh, I recommend the Willow Beach Marina. And it might be cooled off enough by now. Let's see. Willow Beach, California. It gets like 117 degrees out there, but about now it should be fine. 82 Yeah, high, eight, high 90 right now. <laughs> 90 in November. Dang. But, uh, 
later in the year and early in the winter, spring. Very nice. Very nice. I mean, you can go when it's blazing hot, but they do have a canopy over the boats. I recommend it, though. It's fun. No JLP stream? Oh, yeah, I don't believe we're going to be having a JLP stream during the actual election thing. You know, we may not even get the results. We may or may not. Thanks, liberals. Chaos is what they thrive on. It's ridiculous. Um, Before I cover this old school clip from President Trump, then businessman Trump, 34 years old. Man, like some of us are older than 34. Excuse me. Let me get to Mike, first time caller in Houston, Texas. He wants to respond to George. And he, I think he may have an abortion story. Mike, how are you doing? Howdy, hey. Hey. Yeah. Uh, Appreciate you hanging on. Oh, yeah, no problem. Uh, I just want to kind of tell you my thoughts on the whole abortion thing. Uh, you know, abortion, we're not, we're, we can't play God. We didn't create the life, so we can't, we can't take it away in, yeah. in that sense. Yeah. And, and I feel, my personal belief is if, you know, the mother's going to die. Well, so be it. That's God's will. It's just got to happen. One door closes, <laughs> another one opens. You yeah. give up a life, you gain a life. Yep. So, and, and my story is, and I've always been conservative, but I've never really been, like, hardcore conservative until recently. And, and that kind of all started with my son. Uh, I had a son four years ago. And by about two months into the pregnancy, they give us this test. And they, they, they test the baby for disabilities and whatnot. Okay. And... I, I didn't think nothing of it at the time. Uh, I just thought it was just a general thing, and not in my wildest dreams. I ever think I'd have a kid with a disability. Well, uh, they said that the test came out negative, and um, I was like, "All right, cool." Well, we have the baby, and we find out he's got a disability, and it's, it's, it's Down syndrome, so it's a developmental disability. He can't, he, you know, can't talk properly at this point. And, you know, can't use the restroom on his own. I mean, it's pretty tough. Yeah. But looking, looking back, I see now how uh how wrong that test was because they give you that test to give you the option to abort the baby yeah and god made that decision for me yep and uh because at the time i knew abortion was wrong and i probably would have never considered it or i i would have never thought about doing it but if the option had been presented with me and say hey you know you're gonna have a kid with this disability this is all the struggles and uh tribulations and stuff that you're gonna go through yeah i might have i might have considered it so uh, right. now, now, now knowing what I know, I, you know, it doesn't matter what is wrong with that kid. You know, you, you got to give him a chance of life. You know, yeah. give, give him a chance of life because you never know how he's going to be. And, and I got to tell you, you know, he's four years old now. I wouldn't give him up for nothing. He's the best kid ever. Uh, I mean, yeah, he's got his struggles, and, and yeah, man, it's tough. Like, uh, I, I wouldn't wish it on anybody, but you know, at the same time, I got to feel like God chose me to take care of this boy. Right. For some reason, so I mean, I mean, th- th- he's got a purpose or something, and, and and maybe my purpose was for him. So yeah, I, th- that's all I just want to say is that there's just there's nothing that is right about abortion, no matter how you spin it, no matter you know what situation it is, life or death or whatever. Uh, an abortion's wrong, you know, all, all across the board. Yeah, I totally agree. I disagree with President Trump, who says, you know, he's for the exceptions, which is what the I think the Republican platform includes the so-called exceptions of rape and incest and all that stuff. It doesn't yeah. mean you kill the child. It's a child it came to life. Leave right. it alone. Let it live. Exactly. And like I said, that, that child might grow up to cure something or be president or, or, or do something great for the world. You have no idea because there's a lot of kids with disabilities that, that grow up and they, they become productive members of society. Right. You know, so, I, I mean, they can't have that chance if you don't give it to them. Right. It's so. not your choice. It's nope, not, not a woman's all. choice. It's nope. ridiculous. I appreciate yeah. it, man. And uh, Matt living the dream, I think he says, don't let them test your baby into woman. <laughs> well, yeah, and you, you know, didn't even that's, realize that's, you didn't even really think about it, huh? Right ahead no, of time. And, and that's that, that's a very good point. Uh, I've had I've had two other boys since then. I got three boys. Nice. And uh, I don't I, I I don't test. 
you know, and, cool. and because of it, like I said, it's not our choice, you know, and, and I don't need to know, you know, when he comes out, that that's how it comes out, and that's just how it's going to be. I, yep. I, I, I think I'm done having kids now, but, you know, uh, we'll, we'll see. You never know. Well, I don't know, man. The more you have, <laughs> the more they can uh, take care of each other when they're young. And, sure. uh, and then, uh, well, I don't know. Up to you, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, also, I wanted to let you know uh, I'm going to be out there this weekend for the men's forum, so I'm, I'm going to fly out there for you guys. So oh, for Thursday to, night, huh? Yeah, I'm. Uh, hope I get to shake your hand and everything. Right on, dude. I'm looking forward yeah. to that. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. exciting, man. What an honor. Yeah, I I, I can't wait, man. I'm, I'm pretty excited. Cool. Well, be careful on the way. Yes, sir, I will. All right, Mike. It's good to hear from you, man. All right, thanks. Take care. That is cool. Yeah. And I heard Down Syndrome kids are some of the sweetest kids and adults, right? As in nice, uh, decent, <laughs> innocent, kind of. Kind of, right? Uh, let me quickly get to art in Ohio. Let's talk about women. It's so aggressive right now. Art, how are you doing? Hey, hey, how you doing? Thanks for keeping Fine. your subject. I kind of, I kind of went blank when you. It's like we put the light on me. It was like I'm <laughs> shuffling his fingers. But uh, long story short, now nah, with me talking about the uh, girls being aggressive. When I was a kid, I know I'm, I'm, I'm asking you, but I'm gonna tell the story and tell me if you ha- had this happen to you too. Probably when you was like eight or something, you probably I was a mama's boy, came up around a liberal, no dad. What around. prompted you so to when, call? Is this is this in response to that great Sean Connery clip from when he was fifty seven talking about an open handed slap <laughs> to a woman <laughs> is not always inappropriate. <laughs> Depending on the situation, I, it might I, be right. It, it was some. It was a clip. It was a clip you was playing. I, I just. I, it just. It just set some off my head to back to when. Uh, when I was a kid, and to where I thought about where we at now. Okay. Yeah, I played that and clip was, at the end of the show yesterday, guys. If you uh, want to check it out, Monday end of the was, show. And it was something about that too, but I can't remember. I, I okay. watched that last night, and it was something I wanted <laughs> to say something about that too. I can't remember what it was, but this real quick on the. Uh, when I was like, "Hey, you'll be hanging, you'll be sitting around your mom at the table," she'd be like, "Go play her with." Now you'd be like, "Nah, man, I'm shy. I don't want to." Plus, this is a <laughs> trait that a lot of boys have when their dad or not around. They're shy and they not uh, verbally communicate. They don't communicate well, and that's right. how I was. I just like to be up under my mom because I didn't have no strong male alpha male figure. Even my dad is a beta. So, long story short, yeah. Uh, when I would be sitting around her, she'd be like, oh, play. I'm like, no, nah, I'm sitting right here. She'd be, uh, I'd be, and then you would hear the dudes, you know, the dudes trying to talk to my mom. He'd be like, yeah, man, my girls, my little daughter, man, she tough, man. I'd be teaching her how to fight and this and this and this and this and that, man. Yeah. These dudes ain't going to be able to do nothing with her when she get old. And I'm just sitting here thinking, it's like, that's the whole wrong thing that you want to do. Right. That's that's the, that's the, that's the, that's a beta, that's a beta mindset or whatnot. And it's like uh, it's like you see it, it you see it rippling through the community now. Even another example, I remember when I was a, like in the eight, when I was like eight years old, and I was like in the third grade. I remember I was just, just trying to talk to girls with my probably first day of school, seeing a pretty girl, and I'm like, I'm just gonna go up here and tell her, she, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm gonna go tell her she's pretty. Well, guess what she did to me? Uh, hate, hate taking friends. She kicked me in my private part. What the heck? At eight years kicked old? At eight years old, hey, when I That's tell you ridiculous. she kicked me in my kicked me in my private part so so hard, I never feel nothing like it was the first time <laughs> I knew that getting getting kicked in your sack was uh, the end of the world. <laughs> Long story short, oh, man. I hobbled I hobbled off. I ain't know no better or what. And I hobbled right. off, and I went to, I went and told the liberal teacher. Guess what she told me? I still remember this. Don't be messing with her. I said, I ain't what even the- mess with her. I, just, <laughs> I said, she just cold cock need me in my joint. And I just told her she was pretty. And that's what I'm saying. It, it's going on today to where you can't tell. It started all back then. It's going to get so worse <laughs> to where these females do not want to tell each other when they're wrong. And yeah. they're, they're, lead, they're leading to their own self-destruction. Right. It's, it's, to the, it's to the point where, man, you're seeing it. They basically... 
they're programming us to turn us off to them. Right. Because they don't got no, they don't have no feminine traits. They don't want no protection because they know it all or would not. And basically, when you want people to come and save you and come help you, they're not gonna come do it. Right. You don't, you don't, you don't spit and throw shit and slurm shit every. Excuse my language. Excuse. <laughs> through his feces yeah. everywhere. Right. Now don't nobody want to deal. Don't nobody want to deal with you. And then going back to your man with the sweet ponytail, man, he is so beta. Sweet oh, you're talking about the black dude, little little AJ oh, Drake? Poor guy. HK, he, he, you too, famous. Boy, come <laughs> here, boy. Sit, so, sit on your hands, boy. What are you talking about? Yeah. You, you he, he are a D, you are, huh? He's being used, man. He doesn't... He, he doesn't know any better, and it's typical well, of of blacks now. Like they're they're just useful useful idiots for destruction he, he, and division in the country. You totally know he unnecessary. Raised by his mama. It's kind of like by his mama. he did the equivalent of kicking <laughs> kicking Paul Ing when uh, all P- Paul Ing did was say he's pretty. You know what I mean? <laughs> He was pretty. No, I mean, I'm just saying. Well, he did say you're not man enough. <laughs> but, <laughs> but Paul Ying did something very mild, kind of like what uh, you did with the girl. Very yeah. mild, just saying, you know, we've had problems here. And then well, white I'm people not- done a lot of racist things. This is a no N word zone. And then well, he just goes off liberal. on the guy, threatens him. And everybody attacks Paul Ying when Paul Ying, if anything, if anything, if anybody was a victim in the situation, it was Paul Ng, but neither of them were victims, let's be honest. They're two men. I disagree. Men. I disagree. What's that? What do you say? I disagree on that because they both, they both liberals. Yeah. And, uh, I feel well, like, I, I feel, I feel that, I feel like, I feel like the Chinese dude came over there with a liberal mindset and liberal energy and he got what he put, he, he put <laughs> out and got what he got. You see what I'm saying? They, from sweet hair. I don't know you if he's, a, I don't know if he's a liberal or not. I don't, I didn't really catch what type of energy well, exactly he well, was, but it was a, um, it was an honest confrontation between two perhaps flawed men, right? And yeah, it, no harm done, literally no harm done, but they're acting well, like a crime was committed. It's ridiculous. Well, well, why I say he's a liberal is because that's a red flag when he said the N word. He's clearly <laughs> been he's he he's clear. Now, I ain't saying this number. He can say what he want to say. That's to right. your own discretion. If if you want to get the knuckles put on you, or you want to get in the confrontation because <laughs> you want to you want to uh, use the N word, or you want somebody to put the base to your ribs because you want to use the uh, N word, then that's on you or whatnot. That goes for any. You got yeah, you got the freedom of speech. Yeah, but he, you might run across another liberal and they gonna put the base to your ribs. Meaning right. they gonna put the knuckles to your Ribs. Yeah, you know it wasn't yeah. wise, right? It it wasn't wise, but you know he only said the n word because the other guy said the r word, which is worse, well, racist. Well, you know he a he got half his dang on head cut off, <laughs> right? And uh, we had a got a sweet a sweet ponytail to match a sweet <laughs> voice. He got a his his voice is so sweet, he nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, I, I know. I bet it's, re- I, but you know I ain't gonna I ain't gonna even, I ain't gonna even do him like that, man. It's just <laughs> yeah. so sad. That, it, it's just so sad that. That's where these females is leading these young men, right. and they don't, they don't, and, and, and this is all the breakdown on the, over the family and, and see yeah. from the females running these households. And I'm gonna, I want to say one more thing. I want to let you, I want to let you talk, and then I want to say one more thing after that, and I get off. All right. Well, I mean, you said it. Go for it. All right. Well, my other problem comes to. Uh, basically, oh shit! I kind of blanked out, man. That's that, that's that pot, man. <laughs> <laughs> you been? But, uh, you still smoke pot? Yeah, man. I, 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 I still make sure that brain is uh, ticking and firing, man. Every time I talk to you and I listen to y'all, or when I just can find, I hear a lot of great calls and a, a lot of alpha men calling in, and they, they, they truly found God, and you can hear it in their voice, and they, they, this the next. I hear a lot of young dudes that when I just calling. And they sound like they got their heads, so that's something good that I know yeah. that I'm able to participate in, just like you participate in putting your good energy out. Yeah, that's cool, man. But yeah. try I, to get over that. Try to we got to get over our vices so that we can yeah. become powerful men in America. Yes, sir. Again. I agree. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I agree. And uh, yeah, I definitely agree with you. When and it's a it's a it's a it's, a, it's a everyday struggle when I some some. You got you got to take your good with your bad, or when I'd rather have this problem than a, a, a even worse problem. Yeah. And then there's one more thing I gotta say, and I'm getting off. Hey, 
And then I'm about to say, I know, like, and this shout out to Donald Trump. I, I know it's, I know it's kids probably like think, man, my dad, he ain't never talked about God since he's uh, been in press. He's fake or something. I, they probably thinking that. Where I want to tell him that they, uh, I, I want to tell him that they are thinking like that. They're wrong. Everybody has the chance to change. And I think Trump made a true change. That he don't got to see a lot of stuff that he didn't get to see before he was in office. And uh, he, I, I definitely think he. Uh, he he believe in God. He know what's going on. He, yeah. he he's definitely alpha. Yes, he is. He definitely alpha. He believes in God. He knows what's going on. He's living it. He's living yes, he, life. And he has he is full of life. It's nice to see. I love it. Whoa, whoa. Remember I did, hey, one more. Hey, remember I just said that about Amy Coney Beard? I, I didn't want her in, in there and I, I agree with your with you and Jesse. Yeah. But now I come I I come to see I think I think I see why he put in her put her in there. I know I think I know why he put her in there. <laughs> why? Okay, so she, everything that Ruth Gator Ginsburg was in there, she, when she was in there, she was programming the females of now to be on the liberal stuff. I think that they're trying to put Coney Barrett in to deprogram the females, all of them white, black, from liberalism to uh, conservative. Because she's going to, I think she's going to end up uh, switching that abortion stuff up, and they're, they're going to start changing a lot of these liberal laws and uh, small, making the government small, and I think they're going to start doing that. When since she's around, but I think that's why they put her in there is to uh, start deprogramming these females from being so liberal and so so exposed to their devilish father. Because you see what I'm saying? Because uh, was Ruth David Bill Ginsburg married? She was married. Yeah, yeah. I think her. In, fa- in, I think her husband passed away before her. I don't remember, but I see, think she I was married. Either. Yeah, I know well, that she anyways, was married. Yeah. Was it's still something ain't flying right when you talking about you support abortion? So we right. already know where her mind is. Yep. So we know that she set these next these these Hillary Clinton generation of females to be on the track today on hot sauce <laughs> in their purse, hot sauce <laughs> on their emails. Uh, females now we Drew Gator, Bensberg, and Hillary they programmed this generation <laughs> to be so liberal and so demon possessed. Yeah. They ain't gonna. Thing on witches. I woke up, man. I swear, I thought I seen some witches flying around outside. I, could, I know. I'm like, man. I know they. Man, God bless you, Hank. Man, you have a good one. Man. I appreciate it, Art. Appreciate you, man. Take yes, care. Sir. I don't know. I think a man would do better in deprogramming women, but maybe. Who knows? Uh, she has not come through for us yet, <laughs> and she's been on some cases, or she's refrained from joining some cases and it's been for the detriment she hasn't stood on what's right neither honestly has have either of the others or has either of the others um whom president trump appointed but anyway uh (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) i forgot he pulled that thing with the cow um ask how his cow is doing let me show you a little clip couple of clips here of President Trump. My father sent this to me back in February. I just now came across it. I'm horrible with emails, by the way, guys. Send me another email. By the way, one of you guys, if you're still watching, one of you guys sent me a um, video version, a a more active video uh, thing for, like, my break time. You know how I have just that picture and it's not very, it's sort of static. One of you sent me a cool thing, and now I can't find that email. I wonder if I deleted it or just can't find it. I don't remember what your name is. Somebody made a, like a video editor type of a guy, made a nice little intermission hake thing for break time that would have been nice, that would be nice to play on, but anyways. So email me again, sir. I got this. This was posted on YouTube January 14th, 2017. Donald Trump interview, 1980, with Rona Barrett. R-O-N-A. Not to be confused with Rana McDaniel. R-O-N-N-A, I think. McDaniel being Mitt Romney's niece. The rhino. She's a rhino, too. She's really evil. She smeared that guy whom, whose face I showed you. Steve King, Congressman Steve King. Rana McDaniel. She's the chair, female chairman of the Republican Party, more like Rhino Party. Ridiculous. And she called him a white supremacist. Ridiculous. Evil. Basically a Democrat. Somebody said, oh, uh, Republicans are paid to lose. 
and the Democrats are winning. And it's both, both the same side, basically. I think that might have been either John or somebody from who interacted with Mays yesterday. It was a great call. But this is a four-minute interview. I'm going to play a first, like, minute and a half or two minutes from this. It's an excerpt, right? It's not the full interview, but it's an excerpt of 34-year-old Donald Trump from October 6th, 1980, from Reeling in the Years Productions, okay? I'm using it without a license. We'll see what happens, right? Our, their client, Ronan Barrett, asked him these questions in 1980. He seemed to have no political aspirations. And here in 2017, they come across this footage and be like, he was days away from being inaugurated as president, the first term. And they decided to release this stuff because it has some historical um, significance. This is just a few minutes of their 47-minute interview. Never aired. Um, and it, the part that aired was nothing about politics. It was about millionaires, a TV special on millionaires. But check this out. President Trump... Uh, I mean, Donald Trump, 34-year-old businessman. Jimmy Carter was president, and he was commonly cited as the worst president until Obama came in. U.S. had high inflation, high unemployment, and hostages in Iran. Reagan was about to be elected, but he had not been elected yet. Uh, please pardon the ridiculous watermark across this man's face, the screen. It's saying www.reelinintheyears.com. And uh, check it out. Listen to this and watch. Age 34, unaired, 2017. You are a mover, you are a doer. If you could make America perfect, how would you do it? Well, I think that America is a country that has tremendous, tremendous potential. Look I think it. that much like the mind, I think that America is using very, very little of its potential. I feel that this country with the proper leadership can go on to become what it once was. And I hope and certainly hope that it does go on to be what it, uh, what it should be. What should it be? Well, it should, be a it should really be a country that gets the respect of other countries. Today, is respect nice. the most important thing in your opinion? Well, respect can lead to other things. When you get the respect of the other countries, then the other countries tend to do a little bit as you do, and you can create the right attitudes. The, the Iranian situation is a case in point. That they hold our hostages is just absolutely and totally ridiculous that this country sits back and allows a country such as Iran to hold our hostages to my way of thinking is a horror and I don't think they would do it with other countries I honestly don't think they would do it with other countries obviously you're advocating that we should have gone in there with troops etc and brought our boys out I absolutely out. feel that yes I don't think there's any question and there's no question in my mind I think right now would be an oil-rich na nation, and I believe that we should have done it, and I'm very disappointed that we didn't do it, and I don't think anybody would have held us in abeyance. I don't think anybody would have been angry with us, and we had every right to do it at the time. I think we've lost the opportunity. Crazy, huh? President Trump talking the, just the same way to this day. Looks like Barron says Brandon Johnson. <laughs> To this day. I think he looks better today. Although he's, I don't know. Anyway, young baby face, Donald Donald Trump. Illegals for Trump. Nice. <laughs> again, pardon the ridiculous watermark, but he said we're respected again. And that's, or we want to be respected again. Here's the last bit. It's a little bit longer than two minutes. President Trump talking about, I mean, she asked, do you want to be president? Remember, this never aired until uh, they put it up on YouTube in 2017, even though it was recorded way back in 1980. Uh, listen to this. He's going to talk about a strong leader and <laughs> why we don't have good leaders in the government. Watch. For some people, the ultimate goal in life uh, has been becoming the president of the United States. Would you like to be the president of the United States? I really don't like believe I would, Ronald, but I would like to see somebody as the president who could do the job, and there are very capable people in this country. 
most people who are capable are not running for office. It, most men are frightened of politics today. It is a shame, isn't it? Yes. It is a shame. The most capable people are not necessarily running for political office, and that is a very sad commentary on the country. They had major corporations and they had this and that, but they are not running for political office. Why wouldn't someone like yourself run for political office? You have all the money that you possibly need. You've accomplished a great deal, even though you are only 34. I know there's a lot of things that you possibly can do in the years ahead. Why wouldn't you dedicate yourself to public service? Because I think it's a very mean life. I, I would love and I would, I would dedicate my life to this country, but I see it as being a mean life. And I also see it as somebody with strong views and somebody with the kind of views that are maybe a little bit unpopular, which may be right, but may be unpopular, wouldn't necessarily have a chance of getting elected against somebody with no great brain but a big smile. And that's a sad commentary for the political process. Television, in a strange Biden. way, has ruined that process, hasn't it? It's hurt the process very much. I mean, the Abraham Lincolns of the world. Abraham Lincoln would probably not be electable today because of television. He was not a handsome man, and he did not smile at all. He would not day. be considered to be a prime candidate for the presidency, and that's a shame, isn't it? But if all the men are like you, then when are we going to get somebody who might be good? I don't know. I hope it's around the corner, but I don't know. I really don't know. What I would like to be involved in is trying to help choose somebody or working with a group of people whereby they put up a candidate who would be acceptable to be a presidential, you know, uh, to, to be the president. The Illuminati. country, if we had the one man, and it's really not that big a situation. You know, people say, well, what could anybody do as president? The one man could turn this country around. The one proper president could turn this country around. I firmly believe that. If you lost your fortune today, what would you do tomorrow? Maybe I'd run for president. I don't know. <laughs> Interesting, huh? Crazy. That's from Reeling in the Years. Reeling with no G. Very nice. No great brain, but a big smile. Didn't th doesn't that just perfectly describe Joe Biden? No great brain, but a big smile. Crazy. That's Donald Trump. And he's making it happen now. And uh, right on to Ronna Barrett. R-O-N-A-B-A-R-R-E-T-T. -T. I hadn't heard of her. So ladylike. <laughs> That's cool. So right on, that's President Trump. And honestly, like, I was like, a group of people to choose the right candidate. That's basically what he put together with the um, MAGA rallies. He, it was, we the people chose President Trump. And online people chose President Trump. The decent people. <laughs> That's cool. I just had to show, share that with you. I had come across it, just like I said, in my emails, and it's nice. And there's old, a whole bunch of other old clips of President Trump, or Trump, Donald Trump, and he hasn't really changed in terms of his views of China taking advantage of us, and we need strong leaders who are, actually have some character and stand on what's right, not necessarily what's popular. He's right. That's cool. Very nice. Are there changes coming? President Trump, according to Revolver News, signed an executive order, according to National File, making it easier to fire deep state federal workers. You know those unelected bureaucrats who are donating to Hillary Clinton? They call themselves so-called the intelligence community. This is from Revolver and National File by Frank Salvato, November 2nd this year. He signed an executive order that will make it easier to fire poor performing federal workers. It would, be, would have been nice. Oh, well, he did it already with James Comey. Who have been protected by civil service hiring policies. You know, they have these, I don't know, they're like way overprotected federal employees. And government workers in general, they stay paid anyway, right? Poorly performing, not making any profit, not cre creating value much. In fact, being a drain on the value of society. Careers of the deep state <laughs> could be threatened. 
uh, now a uh, uh, federal employee, it creates a new federal employee classification, Schedule F. They will have more latitude to both hire and fire con- employees in a confidential policy determining, policy making, or policy advocating positions. Nice. That's good. Those especially affected by the order are those federal employees who perform poorly, which sounds subjective to me. But hopefully it's the right people deciding what's poor, right? That's why we need d- decent people more and more, right? Mid-level to upper-level managerial positions could be affected. Commonly referred to as careerist. You know how these people make a career out of being federal workers? And they call it, what they selectively, the mainstream media selectively calls that civil service service to your country when usually it's servicing themselves and their phony egotistical ideologies of liberalism or communism or globalist socialism and all that mess hating white peopleism <laughs> hating christians hating trump i am the you know you heard about that guy i am the Resistance, part of the resistance inside the Trump administration, meaning resisting President Trump. All grandstanding as if they have this righteous battle. Ridiculous. That's that anonymous guy, Miles Taylor, who was in Homeland Security, lifelong rhino, donated to Obama when he was 21. Now he's like 34 or something like that. But dumb, not like President Trump back then or then businessman Trump back then. Tom Fitton tweeted out, Tom Fitton of Judicial Watch, who represented Jesse Lee Peterson against Jesse Jackson and them. Great news. Real Donald Trump bureaucracy reform would hold tens of thousands of deep state career employees more accountable to the American people. That is great news. I hope that's true. Most significant significant federal bureaucracy reform in decades. And he links to a White House presidential executive order, I think, creating Schedule F in the accepted service. Nice. That's cool. And uh, they said in a statement released with the order, the White House said before the order removing careerists from the federal government who performed poorly, especially from critical positions, was time consuming and difficult. I told you, you can't, Trump can't just fire all these deep state people. And now he's created an executive order that makes, that establishes an order for going about that, just doing just that, making it easier, which is necessary. So necessary. Agencies need the flexibility to expeditiously remove poorly performing employees from these positions without facing extensive delays or litigation. Federal agency heads have until January 20th, 2021. That's inauguration day, re-inauguration day for President Trump, right? Once he gets re-elected, hopefully, to determine which positions will receive Schedule F designations. Nice. I like it. A second term purge, huh? According to Politico, which is a far left enemy of America outlet generally. White House pots plots possible second term cabinet purge purge i think that might be fear mongering on the part of the liberals and wishful thinking perhaps on the part of conservatives right because it's tough to make changes in the in dinosaurs corrupt evil dinosaurs like is in the federal government right Expelling cabinet members who have crossed the president, refused to mount investigations he has demanded, or contradicted him on coronavirus. That would be nice. It's an article by Nancy Cook, came out the 1st of of November. I would love that. I don't know. But watch your back, guys. Be alert. Because people might go kind of crazy. By the way, did you hear that President Trump was censored by both Facebook and Twitter? I mentioned this in Hake News at the end of hour one of the Jesse Lee Peterson show today. You know how the Supreme Court has 
is not a conservative majority. It's a liberal majority. And they ruled in favor of that sleazy, homosexual, brazenly, shamelessly homosexual, Black Lives Matter agitator, DeRay McKesson, who has blocked both me and Jesse Lee on Twitter. DeRay McKesson, coward, for hiding from a lawsuit from an, a uh, cop who lost teeth, got a brain injury, got a jaw injury or broken or injured. Injured in the Baton Rouge riots, riots, Black Lives Matter riots. He called them protests, but he never condemned riots. The Black Lives Matter people don't condemn riots. They say, riots are the voice of the oppressed or the unheard or something like that. Stupid. A lie. And he refused, I remember it well, DeRay McKesson. Back when uh, it wasn't so much the fat black lesbians who were running Black Lives Matter. He was part of the head of Black Lives Matter. He wasn't a founder, but he was up there in the forefront. Maybe he still is, I don't know. But he's met with George Soros and all those people. George Soros' son or nephew or whatever. Sleazy person. Met uh, Obama at the White House a couple of times. At least a couple of times. Evil person. Imagine if Trump brought the alt-right to the White House, or uh, David Duke to the White House. In fact, they, the White House staff went out of their way to uninvite people who were remotely nationalist to the White House, including uh, Ben Garrison, right? Didn't Ben Garrison get disinvited to the White House when they had this summit on social media censorship? The most censored people were disinvited. Talk about rhinos undermining President Trump and uh, his supporters, his best supporters. It's ridiculous. And I don't know. Maybe uh, Trump was... I don't know if Trump knows about it or not. But it's, it's evil. That would be awesome if, they, if he brought those people. Just to talk with them, right? It's neither an endorsement, nor it's nor a condemnation, nor anything. But it's, they are the people. They're part of the people. They represent the people, but marginalized and silenced and disenfranchised <laughs> and discriminated against. Those are the people who are so-called oppressed, if anybody is. And they are uh, getting sued. Sued. And they're being called fugitives and all kinds of stuff these people, for um, taking part in that Charlottesville thing, which turned into a riot, not because of them so much as because of the Antifa and Black Lives Matter who attacked them. And some of them fought back. Some of them sprayed pepper spray. Maybe some of them it was ill-advised spraying of pepper spray. They got heated and they sprayed it when they didn't need to. Who knows? Or maybe they were completely justified, but it shouldn't even be up for question. They should just, okay, fair fight, guys. But no, they're the only ones who are getting prosecuted. Antifa gets the slide. Black Lives Matter and blacks in general criminals who attack these people get the slide. Get, get to slide. They get to break the law and no, rec no recourse. The mayor, the city council of Charlottesville, Virginia, did not let the police get in between and keep the parties separated. The alt-right, you know, the... Unite the Right people who had that protest in August of 2017. They got the uh, rights to do it. The ACLU, snakes in the grass. They said, no, yeah, let them do it. And then we'll uh, attack them and smear them. And they got smeared and attacked. And some of them went to jail. Some of them are being called fugitives and sued and all this stuff. And the violence was mostly from the left. One guy drove into a crowd and apparently uh, killed or caused the death or whatever, of that Heather Heyer woman, young lady, liberal, white girl, got killed. Not a girl, but white young woman. Died. And everybody went crazy and blamed everything on the alt-right, except for President Trump, who said violence on many sides, and very fine people on both sides of this tearing down the statues uh, question. Which is a bit too gracious, in my opinion. <laughs> On the part of the people tearing down the statues. 
but they're getting sued. Why not DeRay? But no, these federal judges say, DeRay, you can't get sued. Black Lives Matter, you can't get sued. It's your First Amendment right to, to uh, protest. Just because other people are rioting doesn't mean you should be able to get sued for lying and smearing about the cops and inciting violence against cops and whites and all that stuff. And that's what happens over and over and over and over again at Black Lives Matter protests. You hear clips of them saying, oh, hit white, target the white people. Go to their communities or punch whites. And they do it. And they attack reporters. And everybody lets it slide, meaning the mainstream media. And the establishment, the fake judges, the fake politicians, they don't prosecute these rioters for their crimes. But the Supreme Court has let this slide. Thank God for Justice Clarence Thomas dissenting, but really no effect except that it's on the record that he's the one voice of reason. Maybe some, maybe Samuel Alito was with him, I don't know. But Amy Barrett didn't side with him. She let us down again. I think it was a 4-4, four 4-4 four, four four, um, decision. Issuing a stay, I think. Was that a stay? I don't know. There's, there's multiple th- suits going on. All kinds of lawsuits. And you know who's representing DeRay McKesson? The ACLU, Un-American So-Called Civil Liberties Union. Anti-American, really. They're communists. They don't belong in America. Disband them. But, you know, the culture is corrupt. We've got to change the culture. I know some people who are working the ACLU and all that stuff, and they think that they're Christians. Talk about dumb liberals, huh? Female-minded liberals. Uh, So that's that, and Trump has called out the uh, Supreme Court, by the way, because they they did something with the um, Pennsylvania mail-in ballots. Said, oh, you can... As long as they're postmarked by election day. Excuse me, mail it in in time so that uh, your your vote gets in on time. But no, they want to allow, and Trump tweeted this, the Supreme Court decision on voting in Pennsylvania, they're allowing mail-in ballots postmarked by election day so it can come seven days, 14 days After, who knows, you know, if the snail mail is really slow. Usually it's like two days, one day, three days. In California, right? In PA, who knows? Pennsylvania mail-in ballots. Trump tweeted, allowing this, these late ballots coming in. It's just going to cause chaos because people want to know what's the result. What's the result? People don't have patience, especially liberals. So Trump tweeted that the Supreme Court decision on voting... Uh, in Pennsylvania is a very dangerous one. He tweeted this Monday evening, yesterday night. Only hours before election day. It will allow rampant and unchecked cheating and will undermine our entire system of laws. It will also induce violence in the streets. Something must be done. And Twitter censored him. Look at these screenshots of, uh, let's see, Trump censored. Facebook censored him too, a little bit. Twitter censored him and put up fake news about, oh, you can trust mail-in voting. It's safe and secure. Some or all, and they gave a note, Twitter gave gave a note, some or all of the content shared in this tweet might be misleading about an election or other civic process. Learn how voting by mail is safe and secure. And I looked into it, and they're just referencing ABC News and people who are trying to debunk the Heritage Institute, which is... Kind of liberal, but they, they're they somewhat leftover conservative. Both voting by mail, this is Facebook saying this, according to the Bipartisan Policy Center, which is liberal, no doubt. No doubt. Both voting by mail and voting in person have a long history of trustworthiness in the U.S. Voter fraud is extremely rare ac- across voting methods. They don't know that. They don't look for it. And when they look for it, it's hard to find it. How are you going to prove that a vote was fraudulently, ca- fraudulently cast. And, you know, I've, I've seen a report by some guy who's a CBS News type of guy, Tony Docu- Docu- Docopio, CBS This Morning co-host. He said, fraud is, fraud is almost non-existent with mail-in ballots because you need not only the ballot, but lots of personal information to forge a vote. A vote, date of birth, driver license or social security number, 
Official address, full name, plus signature. If missing, the ballot can be rejected, and is. And you know there's a whole lot of ballots getting rejected every year. So make sure if you fill it out, fill it out right. But that's... So they're saying, oh, voter suppression is the problem, not voter fraud. Utterly biased, deceptive... We're opening the treasure chest, guys, by the way. And naive, fake explainer. Citing far-left establishment outlets that don't even... They're not curious. They don't look for it, and they le- they leave it quite wide open for fraud and abuse and dis and just chaos, and they want more and more idiots to vote, people who don't know what they're talking about, who just blindly trust the fake news liberal media, and they are fake. And by the way, the justices last month re- rejected a Republican request to stay for a stay on the Pennsylvania Supreme Court decision. That would have allowed ballots to be counted up to three days after Election Day. The Supreme Court ruled four to four not to issue the stay. So against Republicans, allowing the state to go through with counting those votes. Thanks again, Coney Barrett. Or was that last, was that her fault? I don't know. Maybe she wasn't on there. The Supreme Court requires a majority to grant a stay, but they just let four four, the tie. And they didn't even justify it, by the way. Trigitus. She recused herself in that thing? Ridiculous. Coward. Reminds me of Jeff Sessions. Maybe, actually, I think she's worse than Jeff Sessions. Maybe. In a sense. In many senses, yeah. <laughs> uh, what a shame. <laughs> Chris says, easy, bro. Don't need to trash Jeff Sessions. Oh, one of my stickers was removed. Penny Roo says, Hake, one of your stickers has been removed. Shrugging. Too edgy for D Live? Trump reiterated his criticisms at this at his campaign rally in Kenosha, Wisconsin. And he yeah, in Kenosha. That's where um Kyle John Wick Jack Bauer Rittenhouse was extradited to, to Wisconsin from Illinois. Unjustly. Standing, supposed to stand trial for stupid stuff. Innocent man. But Trump rallied in Kenosha and said um, the Supreme Court made a very dangerous decision last month. Probably shouldn't be speaking this way against the high court, he said. (laughs) But the move was a deep disappointment. Yep. I guess it was a political decision, Trump said. Yeah. These judges, they're cowards. They kiss up to females on the court. They kiss up to uh, blacks like crazy, except for Clarence Thomas, the one man who should be listened to, heeded. They should heed him. Crazy. Did I open the chest? Yes. Congratulations to your welcome. Prodigal sons, angry something. I think it's angry daughters. Let me see. And uh, based AF, based America first, Penny Rue, Ghost Murdoch. Appreciate you guys. Quickly, real quick, did you know, did, did you hear? It was kind of, haven't really heard a lot about it. Another terror attack, this time in Vienna. Vienna, Austria. Majority Catholic country. V- Austria. I know people from Austria. And... Is Arnold from Austria? I don't know. Yeah. And I hear that it was a synagogue shooting. I'm confused by that. Synagogue shooting and yet nightlife. I guess those degenerates... (laughs) I guess it's not a... I don't know. Whatever. This guy, he killed four people. Two men, two women. 20-year-old male. And he got shot and killed too. Thank God. Swift justice. I'm I'm all about that. He doesn't need to stand trial. He got killed in, ba- in the gun battle, basically, right? 20-year-old Muslim terrorist Kujtim Fej Zulai with an automatic rifle. How do you get an automatic rifle? That's, like, hard to come by these days. A pistol, machete, machete. <laughs> and a fake explosive vest, and he just shot up the place 8 p.m. on a, what was that, Monday night? 
Crazy. North Macedonian. Austrian North Macedonian. Dual citizen. And his family's like, oh, he, he didn't, he was normal. And his lawyer, that he tried to go join ISIS in Syria just last year, in April of 2019. Ridiculous. Why do they have, like, a growing minority of these Muslims? Why do they need that? They don't. Why do they need to be there? Let's stop messing with their areas and let them fix the place, which they probably won't. It's crazy. So, vote Donald Trump, guys. We'll see ya. This has been The Hake Report, thehakereport.com for my stuff, jessieleepeterson.com for Jesse's stuff, jessieleepeterson.com if you scroll down. It does have voting info if you n- still need it, including the Craig Huey stuff. <laughs> Appreciate it, guys. Take care. A couple more Super Chats, guys. You're welcome, gave a diamond. Thank you, man. And Fabriets gave a diamond. Trump 2020 and free Kyle. That's Kyle John Wick Jack Bauer Rittenhouse. A hero. Completely innocent. It's complete self-defense case. We'll see what happens. I think that he will get justice. It's ridiculous that he's even charged. Shameful. Anyway, you guys. Take care again.